In this episode of Latitudes, we experience some of Tasmania's historic and natural attractions. Visit some of Europe's attractions, such as the Mediterranean Whale Sanctuary, Spain's movie theme park, and the world's oldest model village in the UK. Finally, we go on a fishing adventure on Australia's east coast. The Isle State of Tasmania off the southeast coast of Australia has many unique historic and natural attractions. Not far from the capital city of Hobart is Richmond, many of whose historic buildings survive to this day. In the 1820s, Richmond was heavily populated with convict road gangs, refractory assigned servants and a fair sprinkling of bush rangers. Governor Arthur believed the situation called for a prison. And so five years before Port Arthur's famous penitentiary came into being, Richmond's jail was built. The jail, with its special audio presentations, greatly adding to the atmosphere, is a quite different experience to Port Arthur and is well worth the visit. Make tracks south of Hobart and within minutes you're on the Huon Trail, a journey of diversity and discovery, taking you through the Huon Valley, Bruny Island and the far south. A region of waterways and wilderness, art, craft and heritage, apple blossom and vineyards, farmers, foresters and fishermen. You'll be amazed at how much there is to do. You'll need several days to fully appreciate what this area has to offer. Take the coast road through Kingston, Margate and down to the seaside town of Kettering. The vehicular ferry takes just 15 minutes to get from Kettering to Roberts Point on Bruny. It's one of the world's most up-to-date vessels. First to Barnes Bay, a great place for a picnic, and to Bly Point, named after Captain William Bly. It was from Bruny that he departed on the bounty to Tahiti and the famous mutiny. Captain James Cook and Captain Furneaux left England in 1772 to explore the South Seas. Furneaux founded this bay in 1773, naming it Adventure Bay. The Bly Museum is a private collection of charts, maps, artefacts and memorabilia. The Neck is a game reserve, where at dusk, penguins emerge from the sea to return to their burrows. Then to what was Australia's oldest manned lighthouse at Cape Bruny. Bruny Island has a lot to offer and a friendly population determined to make you welcome. On Bruny Island you can take walks to discover old logging tracks and original tramways, enjoy secluded inlets, rainforests, abundant bird life, picnic spots, ocean beaches for surfing and beach fishing, sheltered beaches for diving, boating and fishing. A unique experience takes you offshore in the Albatross, a new custom-built 40-foot highly manoeuvrable eco-cruiser. This Bruny Island charters boat is designed to maximise the close interaction between passengers and Bruny's untouched wilderness and abundant diverse wildlife. The relaxing 3-hour 50km eco-cruise takes you past Australia's highest sea cliffs and on to view beautiful remote bays. Returning to shore, the visitor is aware of being just one of the privileged few to experience nature at its unspoiled best. Bruny Island residents know its magic and its charm and are more than happy to share it with visitors. Wherever you go in Tasmania, not far away is a forest just waiting to be explored. 
Tasmania's working forests with their natural wonders and relics of the past are full of things to see and do. It's just a short trip to the spectacular new forest experience, the Tahoon Airwalk. Here you can experience the magnificence of Tasmania's wet eucalypt forests from a totally different point of view. You also have the choice of having a barbecue in a natural setting or enjoying local food in the comfort of the new Tahoon Visitor Centre. In Jeeveston is the Forest and Heritage Centre, the gateway to the Tahoon Airwalk, Southern Forests and the World Heritage Hearts Mountains National Parks. The Forest Room is the perfect place to start your exploration of the forest, to learn about the rainforests and the Tasmanian tree species. Here you can marvel at the resilience of the forest pioneers, play a forest's computer game and ride a sculptured log truck as you hear the driver describe his day. See the centre's own wood turner at work. Wander into the Hearts Gallery to see how the region's craft people express themselves so beautifully in timber. View one of the largest collections of antique woodworking machines. Your hue and trail journey will be one of diversity and discovery. Part of the statewide reserves is at Hastings, a scenic one hour drive from Hewenville, where forest becomes World Heritage Wilderness. Its new interpretation centre providing a rich insight into all that this wonderful area stands for. The Hastings experience includes the remarkable Thermal Springs Pool, heated by nature to 28 degrees all year. Nearby is one of the world's great dolomite caves. Guided tours operate throughout the day to vast, richly adorned chambers which started forming nearly 40 million years ago. For the more adventurous, there are half and four day tours through King George V cave, a wondrous world of formations and intriguing wildlife. Suitable for most reasonably fit people is the glowworm experience, one of Australia's best glowworm displays. Hasting caves and thermal springs, natural sensations to be experienced and enjoyed. When it comes to boating, there's nothing so inviting as the beautiful Huon River. Climb aboard a cruiser to explore the southern reaches of the river. Take your pick of pedal boat to Aquabike or the Huon jet boat for an exhilarating ride up river. Weaving past small islands and timber stands and on for more than 35 minutes of fun and excitement in complete safety with an informative commentary that explains the region. There is excellent trout fishing just one hour from Hobart and it fits in beautifully with the Huon Trail Tour. Snowy Range is a private trout fishery on the edge of the southwest conservation area set in 160 hectares of stunning Tasmanian temperate forest. The fishery has a series of ponds from small to over two hectares to test all levels of angling skill. They're filled from the crystal clear waters of the Little Denison River. The fishery is well stocked with rainbow trout, brown trout and Atlantic salmon varying in size from 300 grams to over 6 kilos. Snowy Range has everything you need for a great day's fishing. Rod hire, kiosk, barbecue and picnic areas. So catch a fish and cook it on site or ask the staff to pack it in ice and take it home. Just some of the many delightful experiences of Tasmania. We venture to the Mediterranean Sea where whales and other sea mammals have lived since ancient times. Whale watching may be a life-changing experience, but it also may be a way to earn good money, say environmentalists who help to run the biggest whale sanctuary in the Mediterranean Sea. Whales are the biggest creatures on the planet, with some species more than 20 metres long and more than 100 tonne in weight. Their beauty, intelligence and social behaviour have always been admired by people.
but as modern civilization advanced, whale hunting, fishing, increasing ship traffic and pollution drove cetaceans further away from the coast and brought some of the species, including blue whales, to the edge of extinction. The century allows the scientists to study whales and other sea mammals in their natural environment and educate common people about them. In 1999, after 10 years of strong lobbying by environmentalist groups, Italy, France and Monaco signed a treaty establishing the whale sanctuary to protect cetaceans in their natural habitats off the Italian and French Rivieras. With its 84,000 square kilometre area and about 2,000 kilometres of coastline, it's the biggest protected area in the Mediterranean Sea and the first one to include international waters. Environmentalists who help to set up and run the sanctuary say the ecosystem is unique and offers a perfect temperature and nourishment conditions for the whales. The Ligurian sanctuary is a very important and crucial area for cetaceans, so it's a great place to go whale watching. Across the Mediterranean is Europe's biggest theme park, Warner Brothers Movie World, just 25 kilometres from Madrid city centre. The park is based on themes, characters and cartoons from Hollywood movies. Employing 1,600 staff, it boasts 25 attractions, 17 restaurants and 14 shops, all spread over an enormous 625-acre site. Amongst other hair-raising rides, Movie World boasts the highest freefall tower in Europe, Standing at 100 metres tall, falling from this Riddler's Revenge is about as much fun as jumping from the top of a skyscraper. A terrifying kilometre long roller coaster that reaches speeds of 90 kilometres an hour. Their shouts and squeals could be heard from outside the park and not without good reason. The younger children seem happier in the Kitsch Cartoon Village, where they get to meet all their favourite Looney Tunes. Six feet tall Sylvesters, Bugs Bunnies and Tweety Birds silently sweating in their fluffy costumes. The park is promoting itself as the natural successor to Disneyland Paris, and other local rivals for the lion's share of the 26 million annual Spanish visits to theme parks. The scale of the park makes these ambitions clear with an impressive daily capacity for 30,000 guests and 7,000 cars. Movie World cost 360 million euros to build and is definitely an exciting tourist attraction in Spain. The world's oldest model village is Beckenscott in the UK. This 1930s creation became an inspiration for similar projects around the world and has retained its ability to delight visitors of all ages. The man who built Beckenscott was Roland Callingham, a wealthy accountant in the village of Beaconsfield, less than an hour from London. His wife also played a part, since it was her refusal in 1929 to allow any more model trains in their house that forced him to look outside. Since then, the village has received over 13 million visitors, with the proceeds going to various charities. A touch of eccentricity is the hallmark of the village. Every villager is individually made, and there's always something happening in a village caught in a time warp. Beckenscott even has a local burglar, who has escaped from the police cells on the high street. The railway and the model houses grew as time progressed outside, until about 1985, when they realised that everything inside the model village was looking really rather drab and really rather boring, because 1980s architecture isn't particularly exciting in rural areas. So they took the decision to backdate it again to the 1930s. 
Over 200,000 people visit it each year. Children, even in a technological age, still find plenty to enjoy. Another intriguing model village can be found in Tasmania. With a great eye for detail, John and Andrew Quip constructed buildings and 400 figurines to create something unique in Australia. It's the only model village reconstructed from a town's original plans, Hobart in the 1820s. It's an outstanding opportunity to see Hobart town as the first free settlers and convicts knew it, and to compare it to the same Sullivan's Cove area today. Marimbula is a beautiful holiday resort town on the south coast of New South Wales in Australia. Marimbula's main business is tourism and the town's population swells to 30,000 during the peak season. Bermagui, located near Marimbula, is also a great fishing town and it offers a safe harbour for boats in all weather. During fishing competitions, this small town becomes a hive of activity. It's not uncommon to have over 200 trailer boats registered for the major fishing events that are held annually at Bermagui. Many anglers from across Australia seem to make a personal pilgrimage to this area for their fishing holiday. Some come from thousands of miles away. Montague Island is accessible from both Marimbula and Bermagui and is a major tourist attraction and fishing location. Montague Island is a national park about 15 miles north of Bermagui. Today the lighthouse is automated so the only inhabitants on the island are a colony of penguins that come ashore every night and scramble up the rocks in their unique waddle. During the summer months, tourists flock to the island to watch this strange performance. The island is also home to a large colony of Australian fur seals. Divers can be amused for hours by the seals' underwater antics. The small pups are the greatest entertainment, as they're just entering the water and still in the early stages of learning to swim. Marimbula's wharf is well inside the estuary and sheltered from the vagaries of wind and sea. From the wharf, anglers can proceed down the channel and out into the ocean. Or if weather conditions are poor, they can go upstream and fish in the lakes. Conditions are good on this day as we join Steve Cooper, the legendary Australian fisherman. He's cruising down the river on low tide, and there's a northerly wind, so he's hoping to catch a mixed bag of fish, maybe even a shark. They have just passed a school of fish, which is a positive indicator. Could be bonita, could be stripies. Fishing offshore is weather dependent. Although the sun is shining, it's the wind that determines if conditions are suitable for game fishing. Weather patterns off this coast are generally stable, which is another reason this coast is so popular with anglers. Salmon. Salmon is it? Yep. salmon. Here they catch a nice salmon and then release it back into the ocean. Right through the mouth there, and that old sea was taking that really well. Yeah, fish of three, four pound. Just for a change, steady as the Just for a change, instead of using a fly rod, light tackle is being used. Ten kilo. Get a bit of fun out of it. 
Uh, I've got a little salmon on here. Uh, Steve has a small salmon on the line. It's been caught with a plastic squid imitation. Plastic squid imitation, just been trolling along the headlands. The salmon put on a good fight. This one is three to four pounds. Try hard. We want this in belly. Yeah. We got here, salmon. Yeah, got a salmon on him. He's three or four pound anyway. He's not not a bad fish. We're going to go fishing for sharks. Usually, it would be released back to the sea, but on this occasion, the salmon will be used as bait to catch a shark. Although it's more productive to fish for sharks in the areas where they're known to frequent, sometimes it's possible to bring one to you. The shark sensors are so acute that they can follow Burley Trail from its source for many miles. Like marlin fishing, shark fishing can also be a game of patience. Unlike marlin fishing, the Burley Trail can produce other species such as tuna and kingfish. Today, it's salmon, one of Australia's finest light tackle sport fish. This salmon will be kept for wild bait later in the day. As usual, the plentiful waters of Marimbula produce not only fish, but the anticipation of tomorrow. Unfortunately, no shark could be caught today, but still, Steve enjoyed a great fishing experience in Bermagui and Marimbula. Join Latitudes again when we next trek the globe and explore fabulous and exciting holiday destinations. For further information regarding any story on this episode, log on to www.pbtv.com.au. This program is proudly supported by PATA and Always Dive Australia.